Hello, my friends. It's Laura Victoria Ward here, and I am going to do another short little micro movement live session. So when I'm talking about micro movement, I mean movement that may be so small you can't see it. It also might be bigger movement, like it could be very obvious visually, or it could be so small that you'd have to really be paying close attention to see it. But the more important thing is that you feel it. So we're, micro movement will help build awareness and also allow you to sort of dial down your nervous system. So yeah, I would say that micro movement may be better for down regulation than for up regulation, but that also sort of depends on where you're doing it and why you're doing it. So it will be helpful in calming the nervous system and taking us into a more uh, parasympathetic nervous system state, which is rest and digest, soothe and settle. It's where your body's calming. And when it's in that calming place, it's capable of processing things. So from the calm place, we can process food. We can process what's happened to us in our lives. We can process a lot of different things that are Things that we don't really do, I think, in our culture very much is take time to process on a physical embodied level. So one way to start, and I'm going to start now, and you're welcome to join me, and that's the invitation is to join me, is just by seating, seating, taking a seated position, sitting on your butt or in a chair, cross-legged, however it feels good to you, and focusing on your breath for a second. In movement analysis, we talk about the growing and shrinking of the breath. So if you imagine one of those, every chiropractor has one of those like little things that expands out. And imagine that that's what's happening with your breath. So every inhalation, you're growing and expanding and every exhalation, you're kind of coming back into yourself. And you can imagine that you're breathing on a cellular level, like your cells are breathing. Woo! Every little cell in your body is breathing. It's moving through or taking nutrition. So that's the processing idea. So with the, um, micro movement with breath, it could just be lengthening and shortening. So I could just focus on the vertical, getting taller and also reaching into the ground. So I'm breathing in two directions. I'm not just going up and then going down. I'm going up and down at the same time. And then I'm coming into myself again. So sometimes it's helpful to do something with the hands to get the feeling in your body as well. So I could just be focusing on lengthening in both directions and then kind of shortening into myself, breathing in the vertical. That could be micro movement. I could do it with widening and narrowing. So on my inhale, I'm widening, thinking of the widening, not just happening in my ribs, but happening in my pelvis, happening in my shoulders, everything getting wider, and then everything coming back into itself, narrowing. So we're moving towards more three-dimensional breathing widening, opening, expanding, and exhaling, coming back in, narrowing in. So you can also see the up, down still. One more like that. And then I'm gonna do it in the forward, backward, in the sagittal dimension. So breathing into the front space and the back space and then coming back in. In Laban, we'd call it bulging and hollowing. Going out and coming back in. Two more like that. Inhale, forward, backward, and exhale. Let it come back to itself. And one more. So that's our three dimensions, right? We have the vertical, the up, down, the horizontal, the side, side, the sagittal, the forward, backward. You can think of like Sagittarius, forward, backward, to help remember that. But we're not just these creatures in the octahedron. We are very three-dimensional and our breath can go in all directions. So we can just breathe like a balloon. So as you're inhaling, breathing in every direction. As you're exhaling, letting it come back into itself. Inhaling, and you could do this with your eyes open or closed. And exhaling. And two more, inhale and exhale. And sometimes when we feel like we can't really get bigger on the inhale, it's because we're not really letting go on the exhale. 
So sometimes before starting a breathing practice, it's great to just let it all out. Then there's a lot more space to come in. Usually when I demonstrate breath in a class, in a movement class, I try and exhale everything out so we can really see the difference. So that's just the growing and shrinking with the breath. But I wanna invite different types of, of, of micro movement in so I can think of like fluid movement, spiraling movement. In Laban, we might talk about this as a shape flow support, an underlying support of my system. And what I'm kind of doing is just shifting from side to side, but there's also a little forward backwards. So for me right now, it's, it's a specific form that I'm following. But what's much more interesting to me is to not follow the specific form and listen into my body, listen into what feels good. So often we're taught in different systems of movement, like pulling it up, suck it in, or push out, or you know, ground yourself. So you learn different ways of tissue behavior when you're learning, like if I learn ballet, everything in and up, draw in, work that deepest corset layer. But if I, and maybe that's that can be in Pilates too, like pull it in, suck it in. What if I wanna have more fluidity and more access? Like what if I wanna be able to push down? To have a baby, you gotta be able to bear down a little bit and also to feel grounded through our torsos, to feel our energy connected to the earth. So thinking of these dimensions and the way that we uh, express sensation in our body and tune into sensation in our body, like we have these three areas, right? We have like the, the pelvis, these three big bony areas the rib cage and lungs, and then the head. And we could say like, that's our gut body, or you know, that's where our guts are. Here's our heart, here's our head. So thinking, emotion, maybe intuition or primal relationship, like primal relationship to the ground, to the earth. I have a gut feeling about something, or it just feels good in my heart, or I can feel the heart of somebody, or they're really in their head. How do we have these different places? So if I wanna find a sense of fluidity between the three places, I'm going to start today, it could go any way, but right now, by kind of allowing my pelvis and my belly, and this is just an image that's really working for me right now, to be almost like a soup. And there's stuff in my soup, and in my belly pelvis soup, I'm just gonna let all the little bits and pieces move around. So some pieces are gonna be heavier, they're gonna drop down, this is in the imaginary soup. This is not in any kind of other thing, but just to give you an image. Some things are gonna be lighter and lift up. And I'm going to think of the, that water imagery of like a soup being fluid as having this capacity to go in any direction. And also it's not form bound. It's only bound by any container it's in. It's not form bound in the way that it moves. Like if we think of water in the ocean, there's so much possibility. If we think of water in a river, it's maybe going pretty much in one direction, but there'll be eddies and whirlpools and still areas within that. So using water, that water imagery to start the movement down in our pelvis, allowing the belly to soften, to melt, some maybe even stick out or draw in. Like just giving yourself some aliveness in how your belly is uh, existing right now. How is it what is the beingness in your belly? And I'm gonna move this down a little bit, which hopefully it won't fall over. You can see my camouflage pants, so you might not be able to see my legs at all because they are camo. But if I'm down here in my belly, I'm gonna let it roil and roll and move. And as I'm moving that, like my pelvic floor, the tissue, the fascia in my pelvic floor is getting some hydration. We hydrate tissue through movement. So micro movement, or this is actually pretty big, you can see it, but it could be small, it could be small. I could move so small that you couldn't tell things are going on down there. But I'm doing this in, in, the, in the idea of hydrating that tissue, creating some freedom in there, maybe releasing my lower back a little bit, and then also establishing a sense of fluidity and fluency from my pelvis, through my rib cage, through to my head, and even out the top. So these three sort of areas are getting a chance to move together. So I could move my pelvis and not move my head at all, which would feel really weird to me. Or I can move it and I can free it up and I can let my head respond. And when I'm doing that, I'm also allowing my nervous system, so that's the bulb of my brain with the cerebral spinal fluid around it, and then down through my um, spinal cord, my nervous system, and then it's routing out into my body like branches to my arms and my legs. So as I'm doing this micro movement, A, I can feel it. 
through my nervous system, but I'm also working to feel a sense of balance between these three places. So if one moves, I started down here, let's, it's, it's easy to get the movement in the bottom and work its way up if you're seated. If I start at my head, it's easy not to move this. If I try to move my way down from my head, it takes more thinking. But if I start here in my pelvis and I allow my spine to free up, you could think of like a snake charmer, but think of the snake. Think of the snake coming up out of the basket and just allow that energy to move. So what's gonna happen is your nervous system is gonna have a little bit more freedom, maybe, maybe not. The cerebral spinal fluid, which is filtering through your body three to four times a day, is gonna have a little bit more freedom, ideally, because you're moving. So there's a chance for that water to filter, maybe in different ways than if you're rigid, right? If we're still, if we're locked into being. And we could do this very small. It could be so small that you could just be standing around waiting for your falafel in line and doing a little bit of micro movement or you could be laying on the floor or you could be on all fours like all of these different ways are ways to access this and i feel like because we have all these little vertebrae in our spine and it has such capacity right we can forward bend we can back bend we can spiral we can do lateral flexion and then we start to just mix all those things up so that our pot of soup has a little bit of all of this stuff in there from the pelvis, through the rib cage, through the head, that there's this sense of freedom. It may be very uncomfortable. If you're really accustomed to specific rigid patterns, you're holding patterns of being you, and you start to set them free a little bit, that can be very, um, it could be triggering. It could be like, wait a minute, what is this? Why, why am I doing that? And the idea of doing it is for hydrating the tissue, hydrating the nervous system, for gaining coherency in the system of your body. So when something's coherent, it works well with each other. It's not shut down in these parts that aren't relating to each other and aren't in dialogue. So the movement can be like a dialogue that's happening, like, oh, the pelvis is moving and that's wriggling up through rib cage, lungs, chest, heart neck, head, jaw, tongue, Ugh. letting that soften and relax so that there's, for me, it's an ease of being. It's moving towards an ease of being where it's just a little bit easier to be a person. It's a little bit softer to be a person. It's a little bit less work. And if you feel like, oh my God, this is so much work. I'm doing all this stuff. It's work. Then just calm down for a minute. Just stop. Let it be easy and gentle and soft or do nothing and feel what you're feeling. So the other big thing, other than the health part of it and like aligning your system, is building a relationship with your body-mind so that there is a sense of what's happening in there. Like if we're really rigid, tension masks sensation. So it's hard to feel what's going on. It's hard to feel at all if we are, you know, there's a reason like military are, you know, very specific and rigid because we don't want our military people to be extremely emotional, right? They're not going to go to war if they are. So, and if we think about like, what are the systems where there is that more fluid movement? How do we, we can culturally judge them and say, Ooh, that's inappropriate movement. Or we can go, Ooh, what, what does that feel like? Try it on, try it on in your body and see what is happening. And with micro movement, it's small, it's safe. You can do it anywhere, anytime, anybody. You can be, anybody can do it. You could be in a chair, you could be, you could do it at church. You could sit there and just have a little bit of extra free flow going on. And especially anytime you need to tune into self. You need to feel into yourself, to, or I don't even wanna say grounding, because it could be very not grounding, depending on how you're moving. But it could be very grounding also. if. It, so all of these things, grounding, not grounding, centering, not centering. When I do it, it feels good. It feels delicious. It feels like, oh, my body is coming to life. But I'm also somebody that has a hard time with stillness. Like I am doing stillness meditation. I am doing mindfulness practice where I do not move <laughs> for up to an hour. That is such a challenge. Although 
it gets easier and easier. But I'm also accustomed to really movement-based meditations where I'm just following delicious sensation. So if I were to do it in my hands, like, okay, I'm just gonna soften. Imagine that my hands are in a flow of water. Maybe they're seaweed, maybe they're like those reeds or river grasses. I'm letting the hands be fluid. What does this benefit my hands? Well, if I've been on a typewriter, or typewriter, yeah, I'm a thousand years old, just in case you didn't know, back in the day we had typewriters. If I've been on a keyboard, then maybe I can get some differentiated movement, which is gonna be healthy for the tissue. Like, right, we're locked into one position for a whole time. This is gonna be hard on the tissue and hard on our nervous system <clears throat> and hard on talking too much. I could do this while I was walking. I could just have little, tall, tiny little micro movements in my hands to bring my awareness to the sensation of having hands. What do they feel like? Are they warm? What do they feel like to each other? Like just bringing awareness into our bodies so that our body and our mind are in a resourceful relationship where we're working together to be in harmony with ourselves, with the planet, with other people. So all of this stuff is really, for me, ways of being that I find so much more resourceful for being a human than, than many other ways that I've learned to be. And I have to say, like, I worked in the fitness world. I worked in dance world. Still love dance. I still love fitness. I still love it all. I like a little bit of everything. But sometimes things are really rigid and they're form-based. And it's, you do this and I know and I'm the expert. With this type of work, you're becoming your own expert. You live in your body. You feel what it feels like to you. And you go, mm, yes, I like that. Oh, or ooh, ah, I'm not quite so sure about that. And the other thing to think about that, this, and this is a continuum idea or an idea I learned from continuum, also from Liz Koch, is it's a layering experience. Every time I come back to my body, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's the Heraclitus quote, you don't step in the same river twice. You are neither the same nor is the river. So we are bodies of water. When we learn to shift, to change, to adapt, and it's not to say that we can't boom, rein it in and be like specific, this is how I want it but we also can have more spaciousness. Like within that watery fluidity is a sense of spaciousness, is a sense of infinity. Especially when I start to add spirals, softness, spirals, and it becomes very effortless. So learning to move in this way, for me, I could do it for hours. I could just be like, mm, yeah, it feels good. It feels delicious. It feels effortless. And my arms aren't, I'm not efforting to hold my arms up. My arms are just there, they're floating around. It's not hard work. It's easy work. It's easy, it feels good. So inviting yourself to think of these hands, these fingers, as these sort of extensions of the rib cage, lungs, and heart, so that this is all coming in. If you've seen pictures of like the, the lungs, they're like the branches of a tree. It looks a lot like a tree with all these branches and leaves. So think of that as the arms extending, drawing in to those lungs, wings of the heart. That's one thing Gil Headley says. I remember he asked, where is your heart? And most people go, oh, it's right here. But he's like, it's everywhere. It's in your whole body because that system of blood is moving through all of you. So that is all your heart system. That is your life, part of your life energy. Yes, I'm total hippie. Um, and I'm also not, I'm also a very form-oriented <laughs> form person. So, okay, so back to the arm branches. Let's get into the arm branches. One thing that we tend to lose, or maybe not have very much in our culture is an awareness of the back space. So what's back there? How can I make my way into the back space in a gentle way, maybe with some curiosity, maybe with some sparkle fingers, pole dancing term sparkle fingers. Although I feel like if we, if we just like flicked out sparkle finger dust all around us in our kinosphere, the world would be a better place. That's the way we should start every sort of meeting. Let's sparkle finger everybody. That's my hippie side. It's not my hippie side, it's my glam rock side. Very different than the hippie side. So feeling into the back space, feeling what's behind you. You can take your awareness into your back space without having to reach into it. Just feel, what do you feel? What is behind you? And as you see, when I'm feeling into my back space, I stop looking at the screen and I just take my mind into the back. And it feels actually kind of cool there because this top part of my neck is exposed. 
I can feel my clothes and I can feel the spaciousness of the whole room. I can feel myself in this place. And it's something that we <clears throat> are often not taught. Even dancers sometimes have horrible spatial awareness, but the awareness of the space around you. Like when we look around, checking out the space around us in our primitive brain right in here, our, our, we go, oh, we're safe, there's nothing here. So being aware of the space around you can also just open up the world, right? We're very narrowed in. We tend to be very narrowed into our phones, right? Here we are. Mm -mm -mm. How many times have you seen a person on a phone that there's no, the world doesn't exist, they're just there. So we wanna grow that world and that awareness and the muscle of awareness. That's what a lot of these micro movement can do is just help come in, feel into movement because it's easier to feel movement sometimes than feeling stillness, right? It's easier to see it, like, right? I have to say something really funny that I was just on a Zoom call with like 450 people, no, 250 people. And I was one of the co-hosts and another co-host goes, oh my God, does so-and-so know their camera's on? There was a woman without any clothes on walking around her yard. And it wasn't like she was trying to show anything off. So it was just like, oh my God, this, this woman and her spatial awareness. But the reason we were drawn to it because she was moving, right? All the other people are sitting on their screens and you don't see them as much as when, when somebody's moving around, there's the outside, all this different stuff. Draw, eyes are drawn to movement. So it's the same thing with our inner eyes, our awareness, when there's a little bit of movement, it's easier to bring the awareness in. Yeah, so just letting yourself become aware of the possibility of micro movement as an awareness building tool and also as a tissue hydrating tool. There's so many things about it that are so wonderful. And it could be huge, it could be tiny, it could be, oh, I just need to go inside, but I don't need anyone to know I'm going inside. You could do it with your eyes open. You can do it with your eyes closed. You can do it standing, seated, I've already said this, anywhere, anyone, anytime. And it just brings us into ourselves for a second or for a lot, a lot longer and gives us a chance to go into this more processing state where our body is dialing down into presence with ourself. So I hope that that was helpful. I, one reason I'm doing this is because I know that anyone can do it. And I also know like one of my, one of my students who used to take one of my classes at um, Moving Body Resources had a back issue at one point and she was like, the only thing I could do was lay there and make sound. So if we add sound to micro movement, like it could be shh or ha, or it could be with vocal cords like ha, e, ooh. If we add that kind of sound, it's gonna vibrate the tissue more and we may have more sensation in there. But in her, in her moment of not being able to do anything, there was still sound vibration. And sound vibration might be some of the most micro movement that you can still sense. And it might take a while to be able to sense it. You might need to put your hand on a body part or to feel, like if I put my hand on the bones of my jaw and I go zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz